Hey guys, it's RJ the Awesome here with the Week 1 Power Rankings for the PMC. And while usually I would be joined by Espelancer, um, he has not returned yet from his uh, move to um, Japan. And by returned yet, I mean he hasn't um, gotten everything ready to where he could go on at line and start recording and stuff. So this time, I will be joined by Choice CJ. Hey guys, it's your friend Choi CJ here, and uh, thank you to RG and to the PMC for having me. Alright, well, um, how about we go ahead and get started? Um, so I guess first off, um, for week one, unfortunately, we did have one match that was not able to be played. That was between the Hamden Hydreigons and the Dallas Manetrics. Um, so RG and I decided to leave them out of the rankings this week. Uh, just because, uh, you know, it wouldn't truly be fair to compare them to the other teams that are in the league since they haven't shown us any results yet. Um, how do you feel about their teams just as the way they're constructed, RG? Um, I actually really like them. Um, putting, like, team base-wise, I would say that they're uh, within my top five, maybe top three. I, I really like their teams, though. It was a shame that we didn't get to see the match. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, sometimes life gets the better of us, and uh, Jay Specs had some factors that were outside of his control that prevented him from playing his match. But uh, I do agree; they have really cool teams. Um, uh, Jay Specs has a really uh, pretty bulky team with Pokemon like Tangrowth and Slowking, Cough, uh, Gregus, and Mill Tank. But he backs up that bulk with some really great wall breaking ability with things like Thunderous T and Mamoswine. And then uh, for Dallas. Uh, Lucky Lad has a, a pretty versatile team with Pokemon like Jirachi, Sylveon, Crobat, some really fearsome wall breakers like Darmanitan, and uh, also Mega Glalie. Uh, so we'll have to be on the lookout for them for week two so they can really show us their skills um, and uh, try and crank out a win for each of them. Um, anyways, on to the countdown. At number 10, I have the Colorado Rapidash. Um... Why I have them low is because in the match against the Misty Drapions, um, they made a few questionable plays that I didn't really think worked. Uh, for example, Shadow sneaking a Star Raptor with a Kecleon. Um, and I, I, like a lot of the times when I see a play I don't agree with, I try to like, um, Correct it in my mind, like, well, maybe he was predicting this, but I don't see any circumstance where Shadow Sneak would have worked there. Um, I do believe in his video that he said that he thought it was a fighting flying type, but, um, those are oh, that'd some... that would be great if it were. That would be such awesome typing. Yeah, man. Mega Star Raptor. Uh, but, um... <laughs> Let's see it happen. But, uh, those are some mistakes that you can't really make. Um, otherwise, it's going to cost you like it did, uh, him. Um, what about you? Um, yeah, so, I'm... I'm in a kind of agreement with you in terms of the Rapidash. The, there were a few questionable plays in, in the game. Um, and, and, you know, as I go through this list, I'll, I'll go ahead and say, you know, take it all with a grain of salt because I don't really know these people personally. So, you know, it's no hard feelings to anybody. But um, there were a few questionable plays. There were a few moments in the game where I thought that, um, and this is true of both sides, you know, people could have taken opportunities to switch out their Pokemon and uh, try and gain some momentum. But, uh, didn't see that happen maybe as much as I would have expected. Um, but I do have them ranked at number nine um, because, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Pokemon like Weavile and uh, Togekiss and Rotom Heat in this format and also Mew. Uh, Mew has the ability to be very versatile. Um, hopefully, uh, Dr. V can use Mew a little bit better. Uh, and the next week, uh, Mew ended up going down to uh, Greninja uh, with a combination of, I think, Waterfall and Night Slash. Yeah. Um, but for my... For my number 10, I have the uh, Sydney Crocodiles, um, who uh, kind of, you know, this is kind of a tough ranking for them because they had probably the hardest week one matchup of any team going up against the Tampa Bay Frogadiers. True. Um, they got, uh, unfortunately, handed a 5-0 loss. Um, they just uh, had a hard time overcoming Pokemon like Grand Bull and Spirit Tomb and... Uh, Got at it, you know, got at it beating, getting beat pretty badly, unfortunately. So I'm really excited to to see if the Crocodiles can bounce back next week against um, their next opponent, who I believe is the uh, Miss. Uh, sorry, the uh, 
have the Night Dragons. I, I think that sounds right. But um, yeah. for number nine, I have the Kansas City Kingdress. And um, I felt like he, like, I know um, Kingdra plays games from a different league. And I feel like he didn't really play to the best of his abilities, like to what I've seen him play. Um, I understand that he hasn't, like, he does, he, this is his first time battling Phantom Base. But um, in the other league, I saw him battle people for the first time too. And he, he played a lot better than I think he played this time. Um, I don't know if it was because it was on Wi-Fi instead of Showdown. But um, I feel like he's capable of doing more. He just didn't show that this week. Right, yeah, I agree. And um, I actually have uh, the Kingdress ranked a little bit higher. Because um, I really like their roster. They've got a really great Firewater Grass Core with Venusaur, Arcanine, and Vaporeon. Um, I would in general agree with your criticism, though. There was a, a moment of the match where um, there was a double switch on both sides, and Tornadus came in for the Kingdras, and Victini came in for the Escavaliers. And um, he mentioned in his commentary that um, he was thinking the Victini might be scarfed. Um, but the tornado stayed in and got taken down from 100% health down to zero. Um, so I think that's kind of what you're saying. You know, it's an example of, uh, you know, maybe in a different week, uh, he wouldn't have made that play. But this week, he just didn't uh, didn't make that the right play just in that scenario. So if he can really take advantage of his roster, I think he'll have the ability to bounce back uh, and uh, make his way up the, uh, up the power rankings. Yeah, I can see that. Um, well, anyways, that's enough with the uh, bronze ranking. Let's move on to the silver ranking. Um, for number eight, I have the Chicago Cub Chews, um, coached by Yuma. Um, I feel like he played really well um, in his match against Stab, and um, it was a really close match. Um, there was the miss... And then there was the damage roll, and it would have been really hard to like decide who would have won if this would have happened and stuff. But um, I feel overall there were just some plays that I personally wouldn't have made. And uh, don't get me wrong, that was an amazing battle, and it could have gone either way. But it's just I feel if um, he would have done a few things differently, he would have had that game in the bag. You understand what I'm saying? I do, yeah. And, um, you know, like maybe against an opponent other than Stab. Uh, and, and I guess we should also disclose uh, the match itself was played by Trev. Um, That's true. And uh, who, who's the assistant coach uh, to Stab uh, on the Sacred Fire. Um, but, you know, against uh, an opponent other than those guys, you know, maybe the match results would have been differently, uh, or resulted differently. Um there, yeah, there, as you mentioned, there was an unfortunate seed flare miss at the end of the match, which potentially could have changed the results. Really hard to say. Um, there, it was a damage roll, I think, on Electabuzz, and then the Gengar that came in afterwards was probably a damage roll. Uh, it's worth mentioning, too, that there's a pretty critical uh, critical hit, <laughs> as you could say, um, with uh, Houndoom on Reuniclus. Um, I'm not 100% sure... Uh, what the Reuniclus could have done in retaliation to Houndoom, but if he could have swapped out the Reuniclus and saved it for later, I bet he could have found a way to recover up on Mesprit or um, Electabuzz or something and be a factor for the rest of the game. So losing the Reuniclus in that way was really tough. Um, so for that reason, I put him just one spot above you on my rankings. I put him at um, number seven instead of number eight. My number eight is the Pittsburgh Steelix. And um, I thought that they would um, be able to take on the Jersey Dwebbles just a little bit better. Uh, the Dwebbles have a lot of unfortunate weaknesses on their team, a lot of four times weakness weaknesses with uh, Pokemon like Swamper and Fortress and um, stuff like that. Uh, but he was unfortunately not able to, to close out that win um, he, he used Pokemon like Gastrodon very effectively, which is really cool. And Electros was able to, uh, have a pretty good impact. Um, but, uh, you know, unfortunately he just wasn't able to come out with the win. So I'll be looking for him to rebound in the next week. 
Yeah, um, I, I, I don't know. I have them all higher, and I'll uh, talk about that later. But um, for number seven, I have the uh, Sydney Crocodiles. And um, as you said, they had a really, really tough matchup going up against the Verde. But um, something I really saw was I saw a lot of potential from them. Like, they made some uh, decent plays that I, that I like, wouldn't have thought of myself. And um, while they're a little... It seems a little inexperienced at some points. I feel like um, if he preps hard enough and he thinks more about what he's going to do, I feel like he's going to do really, really well in this league. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You know, the tough thing about the rankings is, you know, it the rankings make it seem like there's so much distance in between all of these players. You know, like some people are, are obviously – you have much better teams or much better preparation than the other teams. So the, 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 in reality, the, uh, the skill gap is very, it's, it's much narrower than you would think just based on these rankings. Um, so the crocodiles have, you know, the potential to really have a, a good team with a lot of synergy, uh, with things like Tyranitar, Sableye and, uh, talent flame. So as you said, you know, he has the potential. Um, I'm hoping that he does climb up the rankings uh, in these coming weeks. Um, okay. So for number six, um, I know she won her match, but, uh, I have the Misty Drapions. Um, I really wanted to put Misty up higher, but as I stated, um, lower down in the rankings, there were some plays made on both sides that, uh, were kind of confusing to me. Uh, that didn't really work out, and I don't feel like both players really got to show what they're really made of, and so I didn't feel like I could really put her very much higher. Yeah, I, I think I agree with that. So the match between uh, the the Drapions and uh, the Rapidash, yeah, it, it did have some, some, some misplays on both ends, and um, Misty was able to get, get the win at the end, um, I think, you know, maybe this will be a really good opportunity for her to, you know, kind of gain some momentum and uh, learn some valuable lessons. Uh, the nice thing is, you know, she's got a lot of big threats on her team. She's got uh, Mega Charizard X, obviously, which is maybe the most scary thing in, in the league formats. Azumarill with Belly Drum is really scary. Greninja, even if it doesn't have protein, is a really versatile threat in this format. I love Pokemon like Staraptor. I love Metacham. Um, and she was able to prove in this game, you know, she can use a Pokemon like Gliscor very effectively. It was able to take on a Steelix and uh, knock that out. Um, you can perhaps debate whether or not it was a good idea to leave the Steelix in against the Gliscor. Yeah, that was another um, thing I was confused about. Yeah, just because the, the Steelix, I, mean, I guess it did, a, it, you know, did some decent damage with Stone Edge, but you knew that... Uh, Steelix probably wasn't going to end up beating Gliscor 1v1 because it's got Toxic Heal and Roost, um, and it could just whittle down the, the Steelix. Um, and it probably would have been nice to have that Steelix for a Pokemon like Staraptor. But um, anyway, so, so yeah, as you're saying, you kind of you can't give a, a, a complete credit to the Drapions just yet because um, her opponent did make some, some misplays and uh, it's great that she's able to capitalize on that, but uh, we'll have to see how she does against an opponent like uh, the Frogadiers, who uh, might not make the same type of plays. True. Cool. Um, so you have them at number six. I have them at number five. My number six is the Jersey Dwebbles. And uh, so they were able to pull out a pretty good win um, in their week one match. Uh, they had to overcome some threats like a Dragon Dancing, Scrafty, and, um, sorry, let me just tap over here. Um, and, uh, you know, had to overcome Lando T with a scarf. They were able to, to uh, get a couple of misses out of the Lando T while I was going for a little rock slide, so that was nice. And that allowed Fortress to get up some late game hazards. Um, he was able to deal with uh, the clef key really well, um, putting the lumberry on the inferno. But I thought that was really smart. Mm -hmm. um, the reason I don't have them ranked higher, despite the good performance of the match, is I'm just really concerned about 
the team chemistry that we have here. You have a four times weakness to ground on Heatran. You've got a four times weakness to grass on Swamper. Four times weakness to fire on Fortress. Four times weakness to fairy on Pangoro. Four times weakness to ice on Dragonite. So I just feel like if if you go up against a coach like the Verd or you go up against Stab, they're going to be able to take advantage of that. And it's just going to be really crippling throughout the season. Well, um, for number five, I have the uh, Pittsburgh Steelix. And um, I don't know. I feel like the Steelix and Dwebbles match was by far the um, most intense and like shifting match. Like there were parts of it where I'm like, oh my gosh, the Steelix have got this. And then the Dwebbles will come out of nowhere and uh, take the lead and ended up getting like super close to where um, just um, some defense investment into a Gardevoir uh, gave the Dwebbles the match. And um, yeah, it did the, the Gardevoir took that rock slide like a champ. Yeah, and like there were some good plays. Um, uh, for example, um, figuring out that the uh, Zapdos was scarfed when he went into Slowbro and knew that he couldn't. Like that was, I don't know if that was intentional because I ha- um, infrared side isn't up at the time of this recording, but um. I feel like that was a really, really amazing play that really gave him uh, insight on the Zapdos. And uh, like this way he knew how to deal with it. If it went for Thunderbolt, he could go into the Lando. If it went for Hidden Power, he knew Slowbro could take it, no problem. Um, I don't know, that was that was a really good highlight in that match for me. Yeah, and the other thing I really liked was the Calm Mind Clef Key. I thought that was really clever. Oh, that's true. And... Um, and, uh, you know, it could have done some good damage if not for good preparation on the Dwebbles part with the Lumberry Infernape. Yeah, that was, that, that, that threw me so off guard because you never see an offensive Klefki and then here it is. <laughs> yeah. So if he can bring that kind of creativity each week, uh, he's going to score some wins for sure. Now let's move on to the top four or the gold rankings in which um, I have the Jersey Dwebbles. Um, And as I stated in my fifth placing, that match was super, super close. And, um, uh, like, I don't know. Like, I had something on my mind, and it just, like, completely slipped. It's okay. (laughs) Uh, but, But I can't remember what play I was about to say, but it was an amazing play. Oh, true. Like, that match was so, so great. And I couldn't, I don't know, I couldn't really put them too far apart because of just how close that match was. Yeah, that's fair. Um, So for my number four, I have the Kansas City Kingdras, which is pretty high given that they lost 3-0 in their first match. Um. They played a really good team in the Escavaliers that have um, two of the best wall breakers in the format between Victini and Mega Gardevoir. Um, and uh, unfortunately, like once he lost his Tornadus T, he just didn't really have a great answer for uh, some of the Pokemon on the Escavaliers team. Uh, so if the, the reason I have the Kingdras ranked this high is because if they can kind of bounce back and... Uh, make some better decisions in game like not sacking the tornadoes to the victini uh he has the team i think to um to do really well in this format we got versatile pokemon like venusaur and tornadoes t that can be offensive or defensive uh got decent speed with like chinchino uh rotom frost can be a decent scarfer zygarde is a very underrated pokemon you know the four times weakness to ice is bad uh but you can run sets to mitigate that. And Dewblade's also a very underrated Pokemon with Sword Stance and Shadow Sneak. Um, so this ranking is really just based on potential more than results, I would say. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from. Um, I think for the very first time in this entire rankings, we have the same number three. <laughs> um, which are the Cleveland Escavaliers, coached by... Phantom base. And I think he performed really well. He made um, some really good predictions, some really, really good plays. 
Um, and he was able to like combat if something went wrong, he was able to quickly adjust his strategy and uh, just keep going. And um, I feel like out of all the matches, I think he kind of um, overcame his opponent that like I thought that match was gonna be the closest uh out of all the matches and then it just kind of just started to spread and he kept momentum for most of the match and I don't know, I think that was uh really impressive. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, he you know, he used Pokemon like Avalog very well, um, being able to land a toxic on the Vaporeon, which uh you know, they did end up uh he built heel building off, but it put a lot of pressure on the va- Vaporeon. Um, Victini getting a lot of great kills, you know, just, uh, you know, Victini is just such a good Pokemon, you know, in the format. People say this all the time, so I feel bad for repeating just what other people have said. (laughs) Um, but there's just not a lot of answers for, for V create, and there's not a lot of answers for just the, the coverage options that Victini has. Um, so as you mentioned, he's really able to, to break through his opponent's team, which is pretty bulky um and uh, come out with a really good victory so if he continues to you know display those skills and uh take advantage of the strength of his team he's really gonna do some damage in this league yeah and um something i want to point out about about victini one like for most fire types people will bring a water type to kind of wall it but um victini lands bolt strike which kind of just destroys all water types. Correct, yeah. And also on the special side, it learns um, Thunder, and I think it even learns Grass Knot. Yeah, for um, those... Th- Thunder's nice because it gets that accuracy boost from Victory Star. And then Grass Knot, you know, for those pesky water uh, ground types that think they got it down, or for those That's rock right. types. Like, there's literally nothing there to wall Victini. Um, yeah, it just packs coverage for whatever the opponent has, and then you're good to go. But um, let's go on to our top two picks, in which um, I have Stab of the Chicago Sacred Fire, and um, I think that he performed great. Um, there were a few unfortunate happenings with the, throughout the um, battle, and it was really, like, it's uncertain what would have happened if like everything went a certain way. Like if everything went completely perfectly. And, um, but I feel like looking at the teams and looking at the uh, coaches in general, um, I think stab still would have gotten the win. Um, and this is also kind of biased because I know stab better than, um, a lot of these coaches and I know what he's capable of. And so I can't kind of, like it was really close between between him and Phantom Base, but I kind of put him higher up there because I've um, I've battled Stab firsthand, and he is a monster in in battle. Yeah, I've played in a few leagues with Stab, and as you mentioned, he's proven that he has the skills, and he really knows um, he really knows how to win, and he also knows what style is good for him. He really likes to combine. Pokemon like Mega Lopunny, which can clean up a weakened team and then combine them with something like Manaphy, um, which can weaken, uh, you know, punch holes in the opponent's team. Uh, so that's kind of his strategy in, in a lot of his leagues. And so he's got the team to utilize that strategy again. And it doesn't have to be just Mega Lopunny. You know, you can use a Pokemon like Gengar. And with the speed tier that it's got and the coverage that it has, once the team is sufficiently weakened, what are you going to switch in your Gengar or switch it onto your Gengar? You know, the Life Orb set is just so good. Um, you've got Pokemon like Amoongus that can completely uh, take out opponent's threats with Spore. Like, you completely cripple them for the entire game. It's like you're playing five to six the whole game. And uh, you've got two really great utility Pokemon with Mesprit and Clefable. Um, Mesprit, as it as he showed in week one, you know, Healing Wish is a really great move. Uh, brought back his Manaphy to full health. And then Clefable, which he did not bring week one, uh, is perhaps the most versatile Pokemon in the game. 
between its offensive coverage and its utility options. It's got good recovery and it's got two great abilities. Um, so for that reason, I actually have stab ranked number one. Um, and I, your number one is my number two, which is the Tampa Bay Frogadiers. Yeah, I feel like um, Verd, out of everyone, I think he performed the best. Uh, he saw what combat, what combated each of his opponent's bonds. Um, and he was able to quickly adjust after um, remembering that Perugly gets defiant. Like, um, yeah, that, that had the potential to be a pretty bad misplay. But the uh, the rocky helmet plus life orb recoil actually ended up working out in his favor. Yeah, like I I feel like out of everyone he he did play the best. I know I said this already, but I can't like I can't stress this enough. He made he made some good plays. He uh, made some good predictions. And um, again, I battled him firsthand. He is the most amazing team builder I've met. Um, and I look forward to seeing him do amazing in this league. Yeah, I, you know, I have got no qualms whatsoever about you putting him number one. I, you know, I really wanted to put him number one as well. Um, you know, but he, you know, he's he, I play in a couple other leagues with him, and he is good in those leagues as well. So um, instead of just making him number one in every league, I figured I would just you know, <laughs> put him in. You know, maybe knock him down a notch. Just you know, see if. Uh, you know, put a ship on his shoulder and, and uh, see him come back into every league with uh, with extra passion and extra fire. Um, his team's really great. Has a lot of great synergy. Has a, a one of my favorite Pokemon, Embor, on his team. Just really good for uh, just killing stuff. Embor just kills stuff. It's unbelievable. Yeah, like it, it one shot at that physically defensive Sable. I had no problem. Didn't even yeah. get to Mega Evolve. And then I think the thing that. Um, you know, the, the, the MVP for the Frogadiers this week was Spirit Tomb, um, which netted uh, three kills, um, one on Alakazam, one on Metagross, and uh, to be honest, I can't remember what the third one is. I think it was Perugly, but I may be incorrect. Yeah, I would, I would believe that. Um, but yeah, you know, people don't really... <laughs> Spirit Tomb is not really a, uh, a Pokemon that people seek in the draft format, but... Uh, Verd was able to really make it work this week. Um, so, you know, just taking a Pokemon like that, which is really pretty niche, and, uh, you know, using it to run over your opponent's team uh, uh, speaks to his ability uh, as a battler and team builder. Yeah, um, overall, I feel like all 12 of these teams have so much potential, and the um, the rankings could really change in any way, like... Um, who knows, maybe Verd will be at number 12 next week because, um, everyone <laughs> else shows how amazing they are. Um, but no, I, I see, I don't see anyone going, um, undefeated, but I don't see anybody going with zero wins. Like, I yeah, feel I agree with that. like everyone it's here not- is about like evenly matched and I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how the rest of the work, the rest of the weeks go on. I agree, and, and, and I made this comment earlier in the video. Uh, you know, it might seem like there's a big difference between one and twelve, just because that's a lot of numbers, you know. But the the skill gap is really a lot closer than what you might think, just based on looking at numbers. Uh, the the you know, there's the there's a lot of ability for people to go up and down on this, um, you know. And if you're ranked one spot below another person, you know. That doesn't mean that that other person's objectively better or their team is is stronger. You know, everything is kind of uh, it's, there's some fluid. You know, there's some flexibility in the rankings. Uh, so as the season unfolds, definitely see some things shake out. There's going to be more great games. There's going to be more upsets, and uh, I I can't wait to see all of the results. Well, um, anyways, guys, um, go ahead and leave your comments, uh, leave your own power rankings if you want. Um, but you guys stay awesome. I know we will, and I will see you next time.